For Edima, to everyone he's just an ordinary beacon and loving father, but what they don't know is he possesses a very dark past. Even his son, Damilola, is that way off. He used to be the most dangerous man in the country, with 23 assassinations, one relative in domestic operations, and had participated in the military coup. But all that is in the past. He now lives a calm and benign life, working as a construction worker. He seeks to atone for his sins and Christianity has been his salvation. But Damilola doesn't share his faith, and it all has something to do with his mom passing. One day, he and his son, who is an advertising strategy executive, leave for work and later he heads to church where he's taking a sermon. Somewhere else, a man and his child are kidnapped, following heavy gunfire between the police and the kidnappers. The police manage to apprehend one of them while the rest escape with the victims. The contractors of the kidnappers are highly placed individuals in the society that controls even the police and were inclined to release the kidnapper in their custody while claiming he had escaped. A description of the kidnapper was then put out to the public. The kidnapped victims are the husband and child of Professor Stella Craig, who is the director of the Nigerian Energy and Oil Company, NEOC. He has been a strong advocate to eradicate corruption in the oil sector. The kidnappers are less inclined towards money. All they wanted was for her to resign and to show how serious they were. They made her make a difficult choice between her child and her husband, but ended up killing her child after she had picked her. Following her resignation, there is a public outcry as they knew corruption was fighting back. The mastermind behind the whole scheme is an ex-general called General Issa and Senator Dipo, who wanted their man as the director general of NEOC, who would turn a blind eye to their illegal oil mining activities. Meanwhile, Damilola got off work and decided to join his father in church. He messaged his father that he was on his way and that made the man happy since he had refused earlier. They got stopped by the police division known as SACS, who immediately labelled him a kidnapper and a Yahoo boy and all his efforts to prove his identity fell on deaf ears. After they sent the cab driver away, it got clear this man worked for Dipo, so they shot and killed Damilola to replace Dipo's son who was the released kidnapper since they have similar descriptions. Paul was devastated to find his child in the pool of his blood. And since the police believed he was a criminal, it was the law that the government claimed possession of the body pending investigations. But this didn't stop Paul for trying to get Damilola's body back. He got approached by a journalist who believed his son was innocent and wanted to help him prove it. But he declined her help and got picked up by an old colleague of his who later offered him help but he also declined as he believed the death of his son was punishment from God for his past sins. He decided to clear his son's name. At least, then they will release the body for burial. But the police refused to give him the fire on his son, and he ended up assaulting one of them when they wouldn't stop calling his son a criminal. He got arrested, and the journalist, whose name is Victoria, using her police contact, tried to get him out. But it would have to wait till the next day. But before money came, the corrupt policeman beat him up and dumped him in a ditch. He found his way back home and met Victoria, who had left the police station after the claim he had been released. She gave him the police reports while he tended to his wounds and of course, everything there was fabricated but he wouldn't still act on what he has and advised she leave the judgement for God because it could get dangerous. However, she thinks God's judgement takes time and somebody has to be the voice to the voiceless. After ruminating on her words, he decided to seek the truth. He got in contact with his old associates and in no time, he got the policeman who had killed his son while he tortured and extracted information from them. Victoria came to his home. She let herself in when she got no response and found he had made so much in-depth investigations. He came in briefly but didn't see her hiding in Damilola's room. After he left, she made copies of the document and also took the SD card of his camera. In actuality, he knew of her presence and let her take the files containing the confession of the policeman in hopes she would publish it. He then went on to publicly disgrace the officers. Victoria's editor destroyed the only copy of the evidence since it could put targets at her back. And we get to understand that Victoria's mom was a journalist who got killed and she was just protecting her from her mother's fate. Well, that's what she wants her to believe because the truth was she was working for the general. 
Senator Dipo and his men got to know whose son they had killed. Being an old associate of Paul, he knew he was like a dog with a bone and wouldn't let go. The only way to take him down was to stand the whole police force against him. And to do that, Angelo, his top guy and the police DC killed one of the men Paul had released to free him. Later, the bodies of Professor Craig's husband and child were discovered. And while Victoria was about to go to the scene, Paul came for his drive. She told him what had happened and said there was no other evidence. He followed her to Professor Craig's place. Professor Craig recalls she started getting traits when she started working on a particular oil block which she gives them. As they went through the documents, they found out the drilling site has passed several owners and the current owner were listed as confidential. This revelation alerted Paul of danger and he tried to send Victoria off. Angelo and his men had arrived by boats and Paul sensed their presence and hid Victoria in a safe room. There she realized Paul knew everything about her life from when she was a child. Paul put the lights up and skillfully went around the house taking the men down one after the other until he finally came face to face with Angelo. He and Angelo had served in the military together and Angelo recognized he had gone soft since he didn't kill any of the men. He found Victoria after she made the sound and before he could do anything, Paul pointed the gun at him and he surrendered. It was clear to him that it could only have been Senator Dipo who would come after him because he had an agreement with the general before leaving the army. He gives Angelo a message for Dipo that he should make a video recording of himself, Dipo and his son confessing to their crimes before knocking him out. He ties the men outside and burns his house as he escapes with Victoria. He sets the meeting with the general but he wasn't alone as he finally took the help of his old associates who is a good sniper. The general tries to buy him off with 100 million dollars but he was steadfast to play his son's name and to bury him and only the confession from Angelo, Dipu and his son could help him do that. Their failure to come to an agreement meant war. The general had to enact the operation in course fumigation and employs the service of an assassin who never fails. First, the assassin frames Paul for some more police killings and this time, the police also declared war on him. Victoria, trying to understand her past and why Paul knew about every stage of her life, made her visit a man who had raised her and he happened to be a priest while he was away. She took pictures of some documents. Meanwhile, Paul got his hands on some incriminating evidence of the general's manslaughter of military men in Zafra to cover his illegal oil mining operations. Aside this, they needed more leverage and Paul had given up the only book to the general that could have brought him down. So he seeks to join forces with an old friend, Richard, who is very good at staying a ghost. And to find him, he would need to find another man called Big Daddy in the street. It just happens that the first woman he asked about the Big Daddy was the Big Daddy and her lover was Richard, who she revealed to have been killed by the general for trying to leave. That's as he makes it to the place and started killing his way through and also the police were close by. So Paul had to run for it. That's as he almost got him but he held on to a moving truck and escaped. Paul then infiltrated the police headquarters to speak with the commissioner after catching her on her way and taking her gun. He told her everything so far and seeked her help protecting Victoria. The assassin then killed the police DC who at the time was being questioned by the commissioner but she managed to elude him but didn't make it out himself as he got killed by Big Daddy's own assassin for the massacre on her business. Victoria finally made the connection that it was from the priest Paul knew so much about her and when she confronted him, Paul was there also. So you knew this man all along? Paul went on to tell the story from the beginning. Between 1982 and 1984, there was a drug boom in South America and it found its way to Nigeria. The government fought against it but General Issa saw an opportunity and exploited it. He trained men who also oversaw several coups across Africa. They bought those who could be bought and assassinated those they couldn't buy. And Victoria's mother was one of those journalists he had killed during the fumigation because she had uncovered the general's biggest drug smuggler, Dipo. Victoria as a child had seen him but he couldn't kill her so he took her to the priest and since then he had been responsible for her. What was the date? June 4th. 1996. Realizing he was the reason her life got screwed up, she left the church and got adopted outside Bangelo. They engaged Paul in a gunfight and the father got killed in the process. He was given 48 hours to bring Kaduna at the general's farm before they would let Victoria go. At this point, Big Daddy came through to help him take all the power from the general. And to do that, he would need the black book, which is a book he had recorded all the general's drug trafficking business. He only gave it up to save Victoria's life and his. 
When I refused to kill the child, yes, I was going to send the angel to kill her. Do we need to get that book which is stored in a safe in the general's farm in Kaduna to finally take him down? They travel to Kaduna, but he first made arrangements with some of the general's men who were still loyal to him to organize the distraction. That led the soldiers stationed at the farm away, but they did anticipate their reinforcement by the farm squad. Next, Big Daddy brought in her girls who would infiltrate the farm, but for all this to work, Paul went in unarmed. He got suspended by his hands and Victoria was given the gun to shoot him as the general plays mind games with her. And after much pressure, she shot him but it was a flesh wound. Meanwhile, Big Daddy's girls had knocked out most of the farm security with the refreshment they served and shot others. They made their way to the safe and it was at this point the general was made aware of what Paul had been up to. Angela and his men went to intercept Big Daddy before they leave with the safe. They activated the line bomb and a shootout ensued, followed by a car chase to retrieve the safe. It was at that moment that the soldiers joined in and the chase followed for a while until they were brought to a dead end. While Angelo thought he had been cornered, he got shocked when he didn't find the safe in the truck. All the while, the video of the general killing soldiers was already uploaded to the army servers and they immediately withdrew their men, leaving Angelo alone. Even the guards with the general left him fearing for their safety. Since the soldiers were coming for him, Victoria used the opportunity to take their gun, but when she couldn't shoot, the general rode away in his wheelchair, but the soldiers were already in the farm, pulling their way to him. Angelo, unknown to him, he played exactly into Big Daddy's hands because while he was giving a chase, the safe was already transported somewhere else. Paul gave the general the same option he had given him in the past, to take his life or wait for the soldiers. But he cowardly tried to shoot Paul instead. Unfortunately for him, the chambers were empty. He got taken by the army, followed by the arrest of Dupo. But Angelo, he had delivered to Professor Craig, and Victoria finally resigned from the papers. They say if Paul had now entrusted to Victoria to expose his content, and he knows it wouldn't be long before she comes after him too. But he had just one wish to bury his son, which he finally had the opportunity to do.